Get ready to improve on your poker game by watching all of these crazy hands I've played at various casinos across the country recently. And next hand, we're going to get dealt King 8 suited on the button. Unfortunately, there's not going to be a straddle on this time. So it's just going to be regular 510 game. And it is going to fold around to hijack. They're going to be open into $30. Cutoff is actually going to be put in the flat. And this time around, we're actually really shorthanded at the table. We have some people who are sitting out. So I decide, uh, let's get a little bit out of line here. Let's get a little bit tricky. And I decide to put in the three bet squeeze to $120 having position on the button. It does fold around back to my opponents and hijack's going to be put in the call and Cardo is going to be put in the call. That's fine. Nobody likes to fold in these games. We already know that. So we're going to be going three ways to a flop of ace, six, nine, all spades. Holy shit. We just literally flopped the stone cold nuts yes stone cold clip again get used to it because come on now are you kidding me i really put in a three bet squeeze in position and this flop is the thing that happens to me like what a time to be alive this is beautiful so happy that that last table broke let's try to get as much money as we can and with that being said hijack puts in the check cutoff puts in the check and i actually considered putting in the c-bet here this time but after deliberating for like 30 seconds, I decided, you know what? I mean, there's not really that many bad turns. So this time around, I'm going to chill. I'm going to be putting in the check and let's see if somebody else actually takes initiative here. So I do put in the check and we go to a turn and it comes the nine of hearts. Now, crazy turn here. Obviously, if somebody does have a nine, it's good. But if somebody has a boat, it's bad. But they would literally have to have pocket sixes or quad nines kind of hard to even have ace nine suited here would somebody really call that yeah but still i mean those are the two boats i am losing to but yeah and person in hijack actually puts in a check and we do get our wish somebody is taking the initiative here they put out a bet of 180 dollars so we did slow play it on the flop but we're not going to be slow playing it on a turn i'm raising in position i'm bumping it all the way up to 500 dollars and my opponent in hijack is going to fold and then my opponent in cutoff actually tanks for a bit. They tank for a bit here. And then they elect to just put in the call. So we're going heads up to the river and it comes a king of diamonds. Not really changing much here unless they somehow had king nine suited, which is pretty much almost impossible to have based on the board. So yeah, we're not really losing too much here, ladies and gentlemen and they put in a check and we're gonna be betting here on the river of course we're not worried grab my chips think about my sizing and i make it one thousand dollars to go and my opponent actually goes into the tank and i'm like okay this is fine they didn't call right away they're going into the tank and they tank for so long at this point i'm like yo if they call i have to win right like how can i lose here if they're tanking and calling as long as they don't go all in i should be fine here they end up do flicking in the call and I confidently, when I mean I confidently, I confidently, confidently turned over and I said, nut flush, king high flush or whatever. And then this guy turns over pocket sixes. And I'm like, you've just, you just got to be kidding me. Like, why is this happening to me? Like, why do we have to peer the board on a turn? Now I'm going to lose a massive amount in this pot. Almost roughly like $2,000 again is going because... I make a really good hand and i don't hold or i just get stacked period like it's just such a rough session like to go from flopping the nuts to just losing to a boat is just not really fun ladies and gentlemen so i just shake my head and we're just gonna move on and i get to battle one of the best in the game doug polk he opens ace king suited from the hijack to 250 dollars. the hundred dollar straddle is on and i three bet pocket queens to eleven hundred dollars a really 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 strong three bet here versus pretty much an early position razor here with these straddles on and doug polk already is getting ready to put in that four bets in position against me and i'm like damn i'm doing so good right now but he does put in the four bet to twenty eight hundred dollars roughly like a two point two point two two point three x three four bet in position and yeah half pocket queens the third best hand but 
in my eyes the best hand in poker come on i love the ladies that's just how it is we're not gonna be going anywhere ladies and gentlemen we're about to be playing a massive massive deep pot here with well deep stacked big pot with one of the best in the game doug poke ladies and gentlemen so we do flip in the call and in my mind i'm just chanting queen 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 i'm not gonna lie i'm just open for queen make my life easy because you can have aces here kings does have some bluffs like ace five suited etc and the board does come jack 10 four two spades i do have the queen of spades in my hand ladies and gentlemen do of course check to the aggressor here and obviously duck poke is just going to be you know very competent player of course <laughs> just going to be c bet in his entire range here he's not going to four bet in position and somehow find a check on this board at least just not going to happen and he does make it seventeen hundred dollars and yeah i already know i'm not going to be going anywhere but of course just taking my time with this hand this is really a big pot i started this pot with like fourteen fifteen thousand sixteen thousand dollars so one of the biggest deep stacked pots i've ever played in my entire life so yeah, i'm going to tread cautiously and i'm going to put in the call that's not the only reason why i'm trying to costly it's just more so we're really deep like you we we're like roughly three four hundred big blinds deep um depending if you want to cancel strato as a big one whatever you want to do which is really deep here and i have to tread cautiously cautiously i just can't get stacked for 300 big blinds you know just don't want to do that that's a lot of money i don't think people realize that in live poker sometimes you just can't get stacked for three four hundred big blinds especially with just with just one pair like um and i do put in the check in the turn did come to eight of hearts and doug polk does actually now he's all in and as you see i just pretty much just go into the blender here and just gonna think and talk it out and we're just gonna go straight to the footage and hear my thought process here I asserted spot on the felt i, I didn't but i heard I enough to did that pretty fucking it's it's not, it's fire not, again not here room, but i like it I He's like looking for an ace like king grips it spade. all <laughs> in announced really i think so and brandon looks like a little bit of sour chipotle for lunch since i played all day do i want to lose it all here can't lock up the chips rick sometimes you got to put it in in tough situations pocket queens here in the lead plenty of outs for doug polk <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> I can't tell you what I got. My decision was made. What do you got? It's like, Look at the pain he's in. You know? Yeah, yeah. You're not really paying attention to any live calls. I mean, it's just a pause. Tough spot indeed, and Doug not afraid to put his opponents in these positions. Eight, nine. Piece it together. Come on. <laughs> Already 20,000 in the middle. Add a number, add another 10,000 here if Brandon makes the call. I think he's gonna fold. The chat is mixed. I see a lot of ones, a lot of twos. One thing's for sure, we are at the Lodge in the studio. Under the lights. Lodge live stream on a Monday. Like and subscribe to the channel. Doug just said Queens? Yes. What about Queens? Kings? Wow. If you have you have, that means you have aces. <laughs> if you have kings, you have to call. Oh, there you go. Doug did this the I other mean, day. You have kings here. You have kings. Oh boy. <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> I mean, the talking isn't going to affect me. I'm not worried about that. Oh hell yeah. It doesn't. <laughs> hell yeah. The, hell I'm the, yeah. The talking is not doing hell. anything. I'm just really thinking. What, what, can the talking. Can, can you show us your cards? Huh? Shout out to the Bronx. I mean, Hell yeah. I think I can do that, right? That doesn't seem You can. Yeah, that's pretty good. Watch oh, Doug say that. Show. Dead. <laughs> that hand's dead. That has to call. There's that a new rule of the law. Yeah. You show your card, your hand's dead. I mean, some strict places you can't even talk about your hand, you know? Really? Yeah. I think those places are dead, though, right? So, yeah. It's usually on the tournament side. Cash game poker, different yeah. story. So bad. Even in a heads up, they're so strict. Right, Eric? 
in places. I don't know rules. I don't know either. Uh, yeah, me too. I'm I, not talking about here, I but play in other poker. Table play continues play to just talk. Yeah. I, I really don't. On this huge decision for Brandon. The thing is, you never do this with Ace King. That's the thing. Like, I don't wow. believe you do this with Ace King. That's why I want to fold. I just don't believe you do this with Ace King. You can just call him a bitch. Wow. Instead. What about Ace King of Spades? <laughs> he just doesn't do this with Ace King. Oh, I've seen Doug do it with a lot less, sir. Mm. If he shows Ace King, then that's funny. Oof. Like if he actually, but he just doesn't do this with Ace King. Get your popcorn and butter. We're about to have a good laugh. That's the problem. You don't do this with Ace King. That's why I don't fucking beat anything. That's the problem. I don't beat anything. Losing to tens, jacks, kings, or aces. That's what Brandon's thinking. But it's ace king! Ace king of spades! Like one, like 1.1, 1 1.2. I don't think, yeah, you just don't have ace king. Doesn't make sense. What does he have, Rick? He's got ace king. Ooh! You stop talking. <laughs> oh, I got a fold. <laughs> I may be an online player, but that's a fold. That has to. That has to be. All right. Are we folding? Oh. Are I also we? have the queen of spades in my hand, so I'm gonna fold. I have five queens. I'm gonna lay it down. He lays it. Show down. him the ace king. Good. Get, Get good. wrecked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, makes sense. Oh, he has a royal yeah. draw. All right, that's fair. Yeah, royal draw. That's fair. <laughs> but he can't possibly have yeah, ace yeah, king, right? No, you okay, with that king. Hunt, yeah. hunt, with, rabbit hunt. With that ace king. Rabbit hunt. Rabbit hunt. Hunt the rabbits. With that ace king. Oh! Nice Ooh! Great ball. Would have been the nuts. Uh, I, uh, I would have laid inside. Uh, I, I would have said twice. So I would have the yeah. second win. Oh! Second run out? Oh, Doug would have scooped it. And for the next hand, I wake up with ace queen suited of clubs. Have a lady on my hand. So you know I am loving this moment already. And it does fold all the way around the small blind. And they actually put in the limp. The $20 straddle is on by me. And Big Blind actually puts the limp as well. And, you know, once again, not having any of that. I decide to put in the ISO and I bump it up to $100. Small Blind puts in the call. And Big Blind is going to put in the call as well. So we're going to go three ways to a flop of Jack. Three, seven, two clubs, though. Looking pretty good here. I'm liking what I see. We are drawing to the nut flush very good spot to be in both of my opponents do put in the check i decide to put out a bet of 150 dollars roughly half of the pot small blind does put in the call and to my surprise big blind actually goes all in for 430 dollars i did not expect this to happen but hey i'm not complaining i'm drawing to the nuts here it's only 3x the raise anyway and then now i really do have a tough decision to make here i have to decide do i want to call and keep small blind in the pot or do i want to just raise an iso so that i'm just heads up against one opponent and we don't have to beat two people we just got to beat one really tough decision here and i'm thinking about it thinking about it hmm yeah this time i am going to be putting in that raise i pretty much men click it back make it 860 dollars to go and small blind is going into the tank a little bit same person that had six nine suited been playing against them a lot tonight but they do decide to lay it down so we're going to be heads up and we're going to go straight to the run out and I did flip my cards over. My opponent did not. While we were on the flop. And the turn comes in ace. And the river comes the queen, the lady. I have two pair. And my opponent actually says, wow, you rivered me. So apparently it must have flopped some sort of two pair. Like jack seven, jack three, seven three. I don't know what they had. But I did turn and river them. Beautiful. Love to see it. I'm not going to complain about winning while I am behind. And one of the first hands of the night, I wake up with Pocket Kings, the Cowboys. Did you see them yesterday? On the button, under the gun, plus one goes $30 and plus two actually just puts in the call. 
it does fold around to me on the button and we're going to be putting in that three bet our hand is too strong to be flat in here obviously second best hand in poker so we do bump it up to 115 dollars in position it does fold all the way back around to the original razor and they decide to put in the four bet to 270 dollars i mean that's just music to my ears when i have pocket kings right under the gun plus two does fold and now i have a decision here we are playing 1500 dollars effective basically 150 big blinds if you want to look at it that way so i have a decision here whether do i want to call and take a flop or do i just want to get it in so i actually tank here for about 20 30 seconds just thinking about it and i decide we're gonna have an on jamama moment i am all in for fifteen hundred dollars on the dot and my opponent snap calls <laughs> and they do ask me how many times i want to run it i said uh king's been having a rough week you know what and they didn't show their hand but i say hey f it let's just run it one time with pocket kings so let's go to the run out yeah get the rest to get to like look people up and what a beautiful flop king right there in the window and then we boat up in the river we only lose two pocket fives of course my opponent isn't gonna have that in their four bet range they do flip over pocket aces and we turn over pocket kings what a way to catch a two out of for a 150 big blind pot for fifteen hundred dollars let's get it and we do get dealt pocket jacks as soon as we get moved to the next table and big blind this time there's not going to be a straddle on at this new table and it is going to fold all the way around to button and they're going to be putting out an open of thirty dollars small blind is going to be folding and i'm actually going to be putting the three bet here going to be going pretty big we are playing very deep here i make it 140 dollars to go and my opponent is going to be putting it in the call and we're going to be going heads up with the jj's to a flop of eight four two two spades love to see it don't have a spade in my hand but that's all right we pretty much should have the best hand here almost always looking pretty good here we're still ahead of pocket tens pocket nines obviously not ahead of a set but it's all right we have pocket jacks on a low board it's okay everything's gonna be all right so with that being said i do put out a c bet here size up a little bit i make it 140 dollars to go this time and my opponent puts in a call and we go to a turn and it comes a very sad six of spades possibly one of the worst turns i can see now the flush draw just got there on the turn don't have a spade in my hand for backup for the four card flush looking pretty rough now i'm even losing to a set of sixes fours eights twos seven five suited five seven suited that's the same hand i know five three suited if they have that hand in their range like it's just so many freaking hands i'm losing to now so with that being said i'm gonna chill a little bit i'm gonna be putting in a check and my opponent thinks about it for a little bit and surprisingly they're actually gonna be checking back i mean this is not the result that i thought was gonna happen after i put in a check but this is pretty good so we get to see a free river let's hope it's not a spade and it comes a jack of hearts we jack them what a beautiful river i mean i know i'm still behind to a flush but at this point do they really have a flush odds are they're not gonna have that so with that being said i'm loading up the bet here we can't jack somebody and not bet here i grab my chips i make it 400 dollars to go my opponent thinks about it for a little bit and they do flick in the call i turn over my set of jacks and they actually muck their cards so it must be nice to get a table change and we actually win one of the first hands we're going to be playing and they actually let me know i was drawing to one out so hey maybe my luck is finally turning around this session hopefully with this newfound momentum we could keep carrying it and finish off the session strong and one of the first hands of the night i actually wake up with pocket aces in the big blind a big blind special let's get it what a way to start off let's see if we can make some money with this hand and it does fold all the way around to the button and they open rather large they make it 70 dollars to go so roughly 3.5 x open small blind does fold and me and big blind i put in the three bet i bump it up to 210 dollars 
the straddle actually takes their time for a little bit but decides to cold call the three bet so they call for 210 dollars and of course button is just getting amazing odds now for whatever they have in their hand even though they're playing a little short stack but they still say hey f it they're gonna come along as well so they flick in the call so we're gonna be going three ways to a flop of king eight queen rainbow pretty good flop for me here i'm only losing basically to king queen um somebody could have king eight suited as well but very kind of unlikely i'm just mainly worried about king queen and some draws that could be out there right now and i'm the first one to act here i put out a bet of 200 dollars the straddle does put in the call rather quickly and button does fold so we're going to be going heads up to a turn and it comes the six of diamonds once again a relative blank but we do have backdoor diamonds coming in now and i do have black aces in my hand so my opponent could actually have two diamonds in their hand they could even have two hearts in their hand kind of hoping they have either or i mean i have aces i'm not worried about much just don't have me beat already and now i think about it for a little bit and thinking about my size and what am i going to be doing here and i do size up on turn polarizing my range i make it 660 dollars to go and this time my opponent thinks longer they take maybe 30 seconds to a minute but yeah they do put in the call and we go to the river and it comes the ace of hearts what a good river we now have pretty much the nuts set on this board but there's one problem here ladies and gentlemen and the one problem is that if my opponent somehow has jack 10 suited i am going to get stacked 100 percent of the time there is nothing i can do here i'm gonna get stacked i mean it's a great river but yeah i mean at this point i'm hoping my opponent did have king queen because now i am ahead of that hand and there's only one option here with this clean and good of a run out. We're going to have an Anjamama moment and I am all in for $1,100. And my opponent couldn't flick in a chip quick enough after I said I was all in. It pretty much snap call. And once they snap call, I already know that I'm going to be dead. So the one hand that is beating me and that's just going to be Jack 10. And I look over to my left and I do see the bad news. And I'm just like, damn, are you kidding me? So unlucky here. So we basically pretty much just get stacked for a little bit over $2,000. Not really a good way to start out my first session of the series at the Aria. I get dealt Ace-5 offsuit with the $40 straddle in play. I'm actually the $20 straddle. It actually folds all the way around to us and basically we have kind of like a small blind versus big blind game here so i decided to open it up to 110 dollars and the 40 dollar straddle does put in the call and we go to a flop of queen queen eight rainbow ladies on board don't have a lady this time though unfortunately I decided to put out a bet of 125 on the flop before the money it's a lot of money in there with my bet and the straddles all the dead money yeah so i do make it 125 versus to my left who just stacked me with the set of sevens a couple of hands ago they do put in the call turn brings in the five of diamonds so very nice at least i have a pair here looking pretty good i decide to slow down see if my opponent is going to do anything so i decide to check they actually check back river comes the unfortunate eight of spades really rough river here now i do lose to an eight and my five no longer plays i just have ace high and just thinking and i'm like oh you know this opponent has been drinking a bit maybe they'll find a bluff or something like that hopefully they just don't have an eight that's what i'm kind of worried about i do check and then my opponent announces they're going to be betting five hundred dollars <laughs> pretty massive bet here i mean literally that's just a, it's literally a buy-in here and so i go into the tank for a little bit once my opponent bet five hundred dollars i was pretty like 90 something percent sure i was going to call here um pretty good call here with ace high um they can have a lot of hands such as 10 9 jack 10 you know, all of these hands pretty much brick back to a diamonds brick i don't have a diamond on my hand 
So I beat a lot of their bluffs, like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of their bluffs, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't think they have a queen. If they had a queen, they probably would have stabbed on turn with the backdoor diamonds coming in, right? So yeah, I feel pretty good here. So yeah, I do decide to flick in the call and my opponent turns over king high. <laughs> so pretty good spot for me, I scoop an extra $500 on the river. So they did stack me with pocket sevens, but at least I get some money back here with my nice, beautiful ace high call. And literally the next hand I do rebuy and I get dealt ace king offsuit and cut off. The straddle is on for $10 and I have three limpers ahead of me. I decide to bump it up to $65. Under the gun calls my $65 raise and then the person next to them actually bumps it up all the way to $210. Goes back around to me and they are playing roughly $600, $620 effective. And you know what we gotta do? We have an on Jamama moment, I am all in. Might as well, the person at cold call isn't gonna have like aces or kings here. I'm not really worried about them. They are roughly as deep as me with a thousand dollars, but I don't really care, they're not gonna call. And I see immediately that they fold and then the person who made it 210 does put in a call. So we're gonna be heads up and we have the run out. I like it. Oh, the ladies, I gotta beat the ladies. That's my favorite hand, I never there lose to them. Go. Yeah, just like yesterday, there we go. Can't lose to the ladies. And next big hand of the night, I wake up with ace queen suited on the button. We have a limp in early position. It folds around to hijack and they decide to bump it up to $30. Cut off comes along with the call as well. And I decide of course to put in that sexy three bet. I bump it up all the way up to $115. The original limper does fold and it folds all the way back around to hijack who puts in the call and cut off actually puts in the call as well. But cut off actually only has $30 behind. So they're pretty much just going to be all in with any C bet I make on a flop, right? But that's fine. We're basically just going to be kind of heads up for a side pot with hijack but it is basically a three-way kind of pot going for the main pot. So we're gonna go to a flop of Jack, eight, deuce, two spades. So unfortunately there's two spades there, backdoor clubs are possible, but I have two hearts in my hand. Not looking too good here. High Jack does of course check and cut off checks as well. I decide to just put out a bet of $100 here. Little, little small C bet. High Jack does put in the call. And cutoff does announce they're all in with their $35. No problem, that's just the main pot. I'm just focused on the side pot, of course. Now at this point, that money's already in the middle. Turn brings in the ace, but it is the ace of spades. Little problem there. Flush just got there. Once again, I have no back door out with a spade. I literally just have ace queen of hearts. And randomly on this turn, Hijack decides to donk announce they're all in. And I have roughly $450 behind me. So there's basically a $450 jam. Really, really rough spot here. Um, and I go into the tank a little bit. I did immediately feel like I did have to call, but I wanted to think about the situation. And by them donking here, it just kind of, to me, it didn't make much sense. Basically, with a donk here, I was thinking, you know, would somebody really donk a flush? Would they really donk a flush? Obviously, they could have something like Queen 10 suited, Queen 10 of clubs, these kind of hands. But I was really focused on the flush variety. Can they donk a flush or would they donk a flush? And I just didn't believe it because on this turn, I'm going to have a lot of checkbacks. We get to a river. They can jam river and then I have to call. So why would you be so afraid? with a flush here and you're gonna have stuff like queen 10 suited queen 9 suited like really strong flush draws that make flushes on turn and they're gonna be very high like very high flushes so they're not really scared about another spade coming on river so i put all of this into my thought process and on a couple of other things and i decide hey yeah i'm gonna make the call here i do flip in a chip i make the call and we go to the river and then my opponent actually, even before the river came, they were rooting for a spade and they said, yeah, you're probably good. 
and eventually we do go to the river and then they just flip over king jack offsuit so they just had top here top pretty much second best kicker on the flop and they just basically i guess they turned their hand into a bluff on the turn i don't really understand it um yeah really hard to get me to fold here just don't think that this was necessary at all by my opponent but hey i'm not going to complain i'm happy that i actually came up with the call here on the button it does fold all the way around to me like i said a ten dollar strata was on and i decide to open up on button to thirty dollars small blind comes along with the call and big blind comes along with the call as well so we're gonna go three ways to a flop of deuce queen five two diamonds i do not have the king of diamonds in my hand really important that i do not have that so my opponent actually will have more combinations of flush drawers so i have to keep that in mind while the hand is proceeding small blind does put in the check big blind checks as well i decided to put out a really small wager here i just decided to bet 40 dollars small blind actually has all the plans here and they check raised to 155 dollars good god this is a massive massive check raise here ladies and gentlemen um they pretty much made it 4x this shows a, a lot of strength i really have to proceed with caution and after that happens big blind does fold and i decide to not three bet here just this is really like i said a strong raise i'm just gonna be putting in the call and so we're gonna go heads up and a turn comes the nine of clubs relatively a brick and it's like four three and ace four diamonds etc basically just didn't get there right now so looking pretty good and then on turn they do put out a bet of 325 dollars and now i have a really 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 tough decision here um i was just thinking you know i don't have a diamond in my hand if i do call then i can call on river depending on what card comes but this time around you know i did really go deep into the tank here a little bit but hey man i decided it was time for an aunt jamama moment and i go all in on the turn roughly a three and a half x jam here and then unfortunately my opponent snap calls and once he snap calls i already know what's gonna happen here ask him you have a set right pretty much says yes i don't even know point of me running it twice no i'm pretty much dead here and we go to the river it comes the six of spades so yeah and i did actually look up this spot to see if it was a thing versus small blind and it was a thing versus big blind and it actually is fine i can jam pocket kings here on turns at some frequency so my play is completely fine and honestly when the six of spades comes on the river i mean i mean it's pretty much it's not the brickiest card but like if they go all in on the river probably gonna end up finding a call anyway they don't really have two pairs like queen five suited queen deuce suited from the flop like they're not gonna flat small blind like that with those hands especially this person being a rag so yeah just a rough spot but oh well, i gotta take the l and move on and for the first hand of the night i get dealt nine six off suit in the straddle and it's gonna fold all the way around to the small blind they're gonna be putting in a limp big mind's gonna be putting in a limb and i'm just gonna be checking my option bat just so we can get to a flop so we're gonna be going to it three ways and it's gonna come eight five king two spades not the best flop here for nine six offsuit but not gonna complain here we can turn the gutter or maybe river a gutter for the said nuts and with that being said small blind actually puts out a check big blind puts out a bet of 30 dollars 50 percent in a pot and not going to be going anywhere yet of course we're going to be in position with the straddle on i'm going to be flicking in the call and small blind is going to be folding so we're going to go heads up to a turn and it comes a seven from heaven are you kidding me we actually turn the stone cold nuts already this early in the session love to see it and my opponent is not going to be slowing down here they're going to be loading up another barrel here they make it eighty dollars to go and i'm like no 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 this bet is just way too small we have the best hand possible right now 
we're going to be raising it up in position i make it 250 dollars to go and surprisingly they don't even take that long roughly a couple of seconds go by and they actually are going to be flicking in the call so just have to make sure we can dodge a spade on the river and we go to it and it comes a 10 of clubs so we do not have the nuts anymore obviously we can lose to jack nine but for them to really have jack nine would be insane not that many combos of that that's actually going to make it there to the river in this line so with that being said they do put out a check and i'm going to be loading it up here our hand is just way too strong got to get some money in the middle here and i put out a bet of 400 dollars and they end up flicking in the call and they actually turn over two pair and i turn over the nine six and i take down the first pot to start the session this is what you need is great to have some momentum really early in the beginning and things are going to get a little bit different this time around i actually get to play heads up with pasha because the table broke so i do just have a couple of quick hands from that and one of the first hands here that did get interesting i wake up with king queen off on the button and we are playing 510 button's going to be small blind he's going to be big blind with the ten dollars and i do open up to 25 dollars they put in a three bet to 100 dollars and i decide to put in a call so we're going to go of course heads up there's only two of us to a flop of queen jack six rainbow do have top pair second best kicker in the deck i am losing to ace queen here unfortunately and my opponent decides to put out a bet of 100 dollars really standard size here i like it by them and i do decide to not raise here i just put in a call turn comes the 10 of clubs really rough spot here i do now lose to ace king i do have a king in my hand so less combinations of ace king there of course and i do have a club in my hand so i mean looking pretty decent at least i am open-ended to the nuts an ace can come or a nine as long as they don't have ace king of course like i just said and they put out the turn barrel for 225 dollars here and yeah i mean still can't go in anywhere i'm going to be putting in the call and we go to the river and it comes the two of diamonds pretty much the brickest card in the entire deck this one i'm just hoping uh just don't have ace king don't have ace king and i might be good here and they do think about it for a little bit and they announce they're going to be all in for 420 dollars and i just take a quick peek at my cards and i'm like uh i mean pretty much half the call here i have top here with the best kicker and not the best kicker but the second best kicker I mean, yeah, just pretty much a standard call here. Heads up, not much I can do. So I do flick in the call. And then, unfortunately, I see the bad news. My opponent turns over queen six of spades. Are you kidding me? One of the first spots that we do play heads up. And he does pretty much stack me here. So kind of rough. Let's hope we can get him back. And next hand, we're going to wake up with the same hand again. Our favorite, ace king, best drawing hand again this time an under the gun plus two and it is going to fold around to me and i'm going to be open until 30 dollars cutoff is going to be put it in the call but big blind is actually going to put it in that three bet squeeze and they make it 100 dollars to go and this time around i elect to not put in the call i don't want to go multi-way with the person that's in cutoff that flat it and be out of position i want to make sure i maintain my position so we're going to be aggressive here and yes a big line three bet squeeze is super strong but fuck it i don't care we're going for the four bet in position i make it 230 dollars to go and i do get my wish cutoff does lay it down which is going to thin out the field but big blind is actually going to be put in the call so we're going heads up in this four bet pot to a flop of five three two two hearts pretty good flop here but obviously all over peers are ahead of me here i could hit a four or straight don't really see my opponent having pocket sixes that would be insane but hey you never know live cash game is crazy right and it would be even more insane if they had six four suit and just flop a straight I'd, I'd go crazy but anyway my opponent does put out a check and i'm gonna be betting here i'm loading it up dude just put out a small wager though it's just 100 to go my opponent's snap call is literally in like 0.1 second it felt like in real time but yeah they do put in a call so we're going to be going to the turn and it comes a nine of diamonds. My opponent does put out a check and I'm like, uh, just the nine of diamonds. They could possibly have pocket nines, but people in live poker really don't put in that squeeze with pocket nines here in this spot. So I don't really believe that that helped them too much. 
So I'm actually going to be loading up another bet here. I think about my size and based on how much they do have left that I can see across the table. And I decide I'm going to put out a bet of $140. And my opponent, once again, pretty much kind of calls very quickly. So getting a little bit worried here, but we go to the river and it comes a four of spades in a four bed pot. What a beautiful river. Love to see it. And my opponent does put in a check and I think about my size in here. And I'm like, uh, do I want to put out a bet? How much do I want to bet? Or do I just want to put an all in? And yeah, y'all know what time it is. We're going to have another on Jamama moment. That's two for the video. I'm going to be all in on the river with Ace King. And my opponent couldn't call quick enough again. And they show Ace King of Hearts. And I just flip over my Ace King. Just going to be a chop pot. Get the choppers. It's cool. No problem. I'll take that. Just more so happy that the river didn't come, let's say like the four of hearts or a heart didn't come period. I am not complaining at all with this result. And third hand of the night, we wake up with pocket kings, the cowboys. There he is, there he is. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. In under the gun position, I do open to $15 and I get a bunch of callers in a later position. Three callers to be exact. Big blind decides to put in the three bet squeeze to $80. And they actually only have $200 behind here. So I'm thinking with my kings, yeah, definitely going to be put in the four bet here. Want to just get all in the money against big blind right now. And a lot of people pretty much just call in my open behind. Just want to just eliminate them from this situation in this pot. So I decide to put in the nice four bet all the way up to $225. And everybody folds that did call and it does come back around to big blind and they announced that they are going to be making a call as well. So we're going to be heads up in this pot and let's go straight to the run out. Oh. Damn, seven Damn it. You had seven Nice hand. Thank you, thank you. I would have called the one. I would have called the one. Damn it! I would have called the eighty or whatever. So you would have what? I would have called the eighty. Oh, the eighty. The streamers keep eliminating. And I get dealt pocket aces, the rockets, and hijack with the under the gun straddle of ten dollars on. And under the gun plus one does bump it up to thirty five dollars. Does folds around to me and cut off. And I decide to three bet to one hundred and ten dollars. Under the gun plus one puts in the call. So we're gonna go heads up to a flop of Jack, eight, deuce, all diamonds. Fortunately, I do not have a diamond in my hand. We do just have black aces. They check and I decide to still see bet here. I do make it $65 to go. They put in the call. So we go to the turn and it comes the 10 of hearts. They check. And I decide to pot control this time instead of double barreling. So I decided to put in the check back here. We go to the river and it comes a relative blank, the four of spades. I mean, that's as blank of a card as I'm ever going to see. You're a brick city here on the river. And my opponent thinks for a little bit and they do put out, out a bet of $200. And yeah, I just pretty much snap call. I have aces. And unfortunately, they turn over 10-8 suited. So yeah, they hit their two poor on the turn. You're two peer on the turn so yeah i lay it down nothing i can do here and we're gonna lose a pot with aces and for the first pot of the night we're gonna start off with a plo bomb pot each player does put in 25 dollars here we're going eight ways to the flops it's gonna be at least 200 dollars in the middle to start and for this hand the first board comes jack 10 8 and second board comes queen queen 7 we're loving this flop so far on both boards first one we have queen nine of hearts for basically the nut straight so just have to hope our cards hold there and for the second board we do have trip queens you know we love the ladies the ladies treating us right as usual with an ace kicker so we could potentially bolt up in the future and it does fold around to me in hijack and i decide to put out a bet of 100 dollars cut off puts in the call small blind puts in the call as well then it folds around to under the gun and under the gun actually 
pots it and makes it six hundred and twenty five dollars to go gets back around to me and i'm thinking well i mean i'm only in for 14 15 i just moved to this table from another table and yeah i said well might as well gotta go with it i am all in we have an all jamamba moment for $1,415, like I said, I do have the nuts on one board and top trips, top kicker on another board. And the person to my left and cut off folds, but small blind actually comes over the top and goes all in as well. And then it folds around to the person who put in the 625 and they said, well, they're in too. So we're going to have a three way all in for this PLO bomb pot. Let's see the run out. I got the. We'll have a straight on the bottom and a straight boat on, on the top. No, on top of it. Yeah, actually reboat it. Holy no, shit. Seven spool. My hand, Adam. My hand. Yeah, I scooped it. Holy shit. Oh. Wait, what? I have a queen. I oh, didn't shit. The ace nice first hand. Oh then there's a God. side pot. I didn't see the ace. And this was pretty crazy here, ladies and gentlemen. We had the nuts on the first board with the queen nine. Nobody else had the straight. Nobody else boated up with this crazy pairing of the boards here. And on the top, one of my opponents had queen seven for the nut boat on the top. And somebody else had pocket sevens for the second nut boat on the top. But we managed to spike an ace on the turn to take down both boards for this massive, massive, massive over $4,000 pot. Love to see it. What a way to start out my session. And a couple of hands later, I get dealt king, queen, offsuit, and hijack. Once again, the under the gun $20 straddle is on. Folds around to me, and I decide to open up to $60 here. Folds to small blind, and they put in a call. Big blind puts in a call as well. Under the gun straddle folds. So we're going to go three ways to a flop of queen, four, deuce, two hearts. So I flop top pair here with the second best kicker don't see any of these players have an ace queen so it should be pretty good here they both do check to me and i decided to put out a bet of 90 dollars roughly 50 percent of the pot and it was something really interesting here before i made my bet and make sure you keep track of this important information before i made my bet for some reason small blind didn't check right away and usually in this spot you're just going to be checking to the pre-flop aggressor, right? For some reason, small blind took like 20, 30 seconds. They actually took so long that I thought that they might have checked already. I was confused. I was about to take off my headphones, but no, they actually didn't check. So they waited 20, 30 seconds and then checked, right? So keep that in mind. So yeah, like I said, I did make the bet of $90 and both players did call. So we're going to go three ways to the turn and it comes whole baby another lady we love the ladies right so we now have trip queens with should be the best kicker right now small blind does check and then for some weird odd reason big blind just donks out 270 dollars i'm like what the hell is going on how are they starting to donk here just really i mean this is a super strong donk for the top card to pair and they just start donking so obviously i mean at this point I just put them on a queen right it's probably just gonna have a queen a lot of the time so i do see that there's a flush draw on board and i do have a heart in my hand so i'm not too worried about the flush draw but the problem is that i still have another player to my left normally in this spot i probably would just call but this time i do decide to raise we're playing pretty deep i want to make sure that the person to my left actually just gets out of the way or they're pretty much you know forced to play their hand uh, pretty much face up at this point right so i do raise in position to 650 dollars and immediately when i raise the 650 dollars small blind announces that they're all in you've got to be kidding me they go all in i'm playing relatively really deep with them they basically go all in and i would have to call off a total of three thousand dollars so basically they went I would have to call off 
total three thousand so basically twenty four hundred dollars more big blind does fold and now the action's on me and i actually go into the tank here i actually go into the tank because this person just three bet the flop they literally just three bet well not the flop they three bet the turn right this is super super strong ladies and gentlemen super super strong and it raises 5x my raise after i raised a dog so this line is just super strong i let the table know i'm gonna need like two or three minutes and i'm taking my time tanking tanking and even after like 10 20 seconds i already was telling you know the person who went all in i said yo i'm probably just gonna fold but like I, I told him i just feel like you have it here like this just didn't make sense um i'm pretty much dead to ace queen which i didn't i believe that this player would be three better than that you know haven't been at the table too long but i am dead to ace queen i don't think a weaker queen actually just jam here so i actually straight up told them you know i said i just believe you got a boat you just have a boat you have pocket fours or pocket deuces that's all that you have here that's exactly what i told them you just have a boat before i fold it and you know and one of the main important things is remember that at the beginning of the hand on a flop that that player waited like 20 to 30 seconds to check they waited 20 to 30 seconds to check because they were gonna dunk they were gonna dunk the flop so that even played more into my decision because you're just supposed to just check that spot to the pre flop aggressor right they took way too long that they were planning to dunk and i was thinking you know what would dunk here flush draw on board you can just dunk pocket fours and pocket deuces right so after doing all of this thought process and all of that i actually laid down my cards i showed them king queen offsuit and they decide to show for the poker video so shout out to this player at hustlers casino they show pocket fours for the turn boat so what an amazing lay down by me let me know what you think about that in the comments below And next hand of the night, we actually get move tables and we had to play a 1-3 with a $10 straddle on for this specific hand. So at least I'm still playing with the $10 straddle. Love to see it. And I'm in a $10 straddle and I wake up with pocket aces. What a time to straddle. What a time to be alive. And in this hand, we actually get three limpers in middle position and small blind actually decides to bump it up to 75 dollars i mean that's just music to my ears when i have pocket aces big blind actually goes all in for 200 dollars and sticky situation here because i can four bet here and then i'll be in position to small blind or i can get tricky with a little bit of a flat here being only a thousand dollars effective with small blind roughly so i elect to go with the second option i actually just flat here with pocket aces knowing that i'm going to be in position that's the thing really good spot for me to do it and small blind actually comes along with the call as well so like i said big blind is all in so we're pretty much heads up against small blind and the flop comes jack free ace we pretty much just hit top set here loving what i see here two diamonds on the board i do not have the ace of diamonds on my hand so flush drawers are out there i got to keep that in mind and my opponent in small blind does check and i decide hmm do i want to bet here no not this summer i'm actually going to check back try to give my opponent a chance to catch up here maybe they have like pocket tens pocket nines they can turn a set river set and then they just get stacked right and the turn does bring in the six of clubs unfortunately my opponent does check again and at this point i decide okay i gotta start putting money into the pot it is roughly 600 dollars or so i do just put out a bet of roughly 20 percent in the pot 120 dollars my opponent thinks for a couple of seconds and they pretty much just snap fold so we're going to be going heads up and the river comes the eight of spades my opponent in big blind actually does show me their cards they had king nine of diamonds luckily diamonds are not forever here and we do take down the massive three-way pot and second hand of the night oh baby we wake up with pocket queens the ladies my favorite hand of all time i love the ladies 
they love me and in low jack i do open up to 30 dollars cut off comes along with the call and it does fold all the way to big blind and apparently he has other plans with his hand does put in the three bet squeeze to 150 dollars does fold all the way around to me and i have a tough decision here um the person who did three bet squeeze did only have roughly 650 dollars behind or so and i figured well um i mean i can either four bet in position i don't really want to call here and invite cut off the opportunity to call as well so we can go to a flop three ways with pocket queens definitely could be some troublesome flops for me so i decide hey i mean instead of four betting y'all know what time it is it's an on demand moment i am all in for roughly over a thousand dollars i don't ever see him cut off ever being able to call here yeah actually roughly fifteen hundred dollars cut off can't make the call like i just said and cut off does fold and big blind does flip in the call and we decide we're actually going to run it twice i did ask them they said they want to run it twice i said oh yeah okay i'll run it two times with the ladies and then unfortunately they turn over pocket aces so we're going to have to hit a lady on one of these boards to split the pot and just before this hand i did let everybody know when i have pocket queens and my opponent has aces it is definitely a 40 60 spot just remember that all right, this is remember what I told you, right? This is the moment. This is what I said. 40-60. 40-60. I'm gonna win. All right, I gotta win at least one, right? I have to win. I had the ladies do not let me down. And for that second run out, we spiked the queen on the flop to take down half of the pot. Just like I said, it's a 40-60 spot when I have pocket queens and you have aces. That's just the laws of math. That's how it works. I love the ladies, they love me. One of the first hands of the day I get dealt Pocket Kings of the Cowboys. You know we're gonna win the Super Bowl next year, right? I can't stand uh, listen, it. In hijack. It does fold around to a low jack and they decide to put in the limp for ten dollars. Twenty dollar straddle is not on this time. And I decide to ISO, I bump it up to forty dollars. Does fold around rather quickly all the way back to low jack and they put in the call. So we're gonna be going heads up to a flop of king. 310 all spades but we have top set here really hoping that the board can peer at some point obviously i could be losing the flushes already but i mean we have top set not too worried right low jack does check i decide to put out a small wager for 30 dollars they quickly put in a call turn brings in the nine of clubs a little bit scary of a turn here they can have queen jack suited here so yeah they could have a straight already they do check but i'm still not really too worried about that i mean we have top sets still going to be betting here of course i do put out a bet of 130 dollars they think for a little bit and unfortunately we start to see the bad news brewing they check raise me to $330. Really rough spot for me here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, do have top set. Could they really be raising worse? I mean, sometimes they can. They can, of course, still have some bluffs. But yeah, just not, not looking good based on the player that, you know, I've seen to my right. So yeah, but we're going to be putting in the call and the river comes the five of clubs a relative brick here and my opponent immediately pretty much is going for some chips and he put out a bet of four hundred dollars and i'm just thinking at this point um am i gonna call or raise did think about it for like half a minute just in case to see if i should ever be raising but my opponent was a little bit on the older side so i thought hey i mean are they really going to be bluffing here too often? They could, but sometimes it's not that likely with this player type. So, but yeah, I decided to just put in a call and I see the very, very bad news. They show me that they flopped a low, 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 low weak flush. But yeah, just a bit upset there. Not a good way to lose first part of the day, but hopefully it can get better from here on out.
And next hand, I am in the $20 Strata with Ace Jack Offsuit. It does fold all the way around to small blind and they put in the Olymp for $20. Big blind isos it up to $85. And I decide to put in the three bet, making it $260 to go. Small blind, of course, folds and big blind is gonna put in a call. So we are gonna be in position here. And we're going to go heads up to a flop of queen, six, three, two spades. Don't have a spade in my hand. I do have the ace of clubs. So looking pretty good here. They do check. Definitely going to just be bet in range here on this flop. I do put out a bet of $155. My opponent thinks for a little bit. And he does put in a call. Turn brings in the king of hearts. They check and now we have a tough decision here. King is really, really good. I do have way more ace king than my opponent has. So it's really smashing my range here. And I do unblock spades and I can hit a 10 for the nuts. So have a lot going for me here. And yeah, with that being said, and for some other reasons, I'm going to be double barreling here. Open to just take it down here. I do put out a bet of $575. It puts my opponent really in a blender spot here. They have to think that depending on what the river is. And if I do really have ace king, I'm going to just be barreling off. I still have all the aces, ace king, ace queen, king queen, pocket queens, pocket ace. I just have so many good hands here. They have to be really, really careful. And he does think for about a minute, a minute and a half. I'm like sweating bullets at this point. Like, just lay it down. Just lay down your hand. And eventually they do finally fold and we take down this massive pot. Very nice. And I am actually in the big blind for $5. Small blind does fold. They are first act in situation with straddle on the button. And I decide to open up to $120. The $10 straddle folds. $20 straddle and cutoff folds and button does elect to put in the call. So we're actually going to be going heads up to a flop of 10, eight deuce, two spades. Love to see it. I mean, I have the ladies $40 straddle was on. I have to stack this person. That is the goal here. I do think about it for a little bit and I decide to put out a bet of $135. I do have the queen of spades in my hand, but I'm still hoping my opponent just has a 10 or an 8, just something to continue with. They do end up coming along with the call. And we go to the turn and it comes the five of clubs, a relative blank here. And at this point, I do check my opponent's chips and notice that they don't have much behind. They're only sitting with roughly $465. That's roughly the same size of the pot. So y'all know what time it is. You're going to have an Aunt Jamama moment. I am all in. For $465 and my opponent pretty much snap calls in a half of a second ask them again or they want to run it twice pretty much having them pick and they decide they want to run it twice and I flip over my Queens and to my disbelief we see that they turn over five two of hearts and for the first run out, it comes the king of diamonds. And for the second run out, it comes the three of clubs. Are you kidding me? They put on the $40 straddle, call with bottom pair, no backdoor, no nothing, and just spike the five on a turn. Really unlucky spot here. But hey, that does make up for me. Cracking their aces, I guess, if you look at it that way. But I mean, I was supposed to win that hand though, right? I mean, the ladies love me, duh. But we lose this time. It's all right. Let's move on to the next one. We get the ace king in the under the gun $20 straddle. It does fold all the way around to small blind and they decide to open up to $80. Big blind does fold and I decide to put in the three bet to $290. I accidentally um, three bet kind of big here. I thought I was going to be out of position. And didn't realize I was in position. I would have loved to have just gone like 260, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's the size I used. And they still put in the call, so it works out for me, right? And we're going to go heads up to a flop of king, nine, six, two hearts. I do have the ace of hearts in my hand. Really important card to have here. 
And we have top pair, top kicker. No complaints. Only behind two pocket nines, sixes, and king nine suited right now. That's about it. And they do check. I put out a bet of $200. They come along with the call. So we're going to go to the turn. And it comes the three of hearts. My opponent checks again. And really, really good turn here. Like I said, I do have the ace of hearts. So I'm blocking flushes. And I'm also drawing to the nuts at this point even if they do have a set so really really good card here and this time one turn instead of going for a really strong polarizing size i decide to just put out a small wager here I just go 350 dollars relatively small compared to the almost thousand dollars or so that we have in the pot already so yeah just a 350 dollar bet here and they do come along with the call and we go to the river and it comes the four of clubs just a relative brick they check and they have roughly twelve hundred dollars behind so you know what time it is ladies and gentlemen we're gonna have an Aunt Jamama moment i am all in with my top here top kicker flipping one chip and my opponent goes into the tank goes into the tank he's thinking 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 Thanks for maybe at least almost even two minutes. And at this point, I'm feeling really good. I know if they call, I'm definitely going to win here. But unfortunately, they do end up laying it down. So I do take down this massive pot, massive three bet pot. Then my opponent actually did say the king was no good there, right? So they did have some sort of king. Maybe they had like king 10, king jack, just, just a king with a weak kicker basically that they didn't want to put in the middle because of the flush draw being on board so maybe if the run out was clean and i triple barreled off maybe we get the call but hey i'll take it i wake up with pocket kings of the cowboys on the button it does fold all the way around to me and i decide to open up to 30 dollars Folds all the way to the $10 straddle and they put in a three bet to $130. Hey, you know, we're going to be bumping it up here. I four bet to $280 and my opponent thinks for a little bit and they do put in the call. So we're going to go heads up in this four bet pot to a flop of Jack six, three rainbow. That flop is looking beautiful for the black Kings that I have in my hand only thing i'm really afraid of right now is of course pocket jacks that's pretty much the only hand that is beating me my opponent does put in the check i put out a wager of 175 dollars doesn't take my opponent too long as he comes along with the call turn comes the three of hearts a relative brick and the good thing about the three of hearts is that now it is a rainbow board on the turn that means there is no worry about any flush drawers very beautiful for me here and my opponent puts in a check and i decide to put out a relatively small bet again just 180 dollars we're just reeling them in reeling them in right here ladies and gentlemen and my opponent once again does put in the call we go to a river and it comes the seven of diamonds beautiful card for me to see a relative blank once again i am basically only losing two pocket jacks here my opponent never has ace three suited they never have pocket sevens they can possibly have five four suited but that almost never happens here we are looking pretty good and my opponent does put in the check and y'all know what it's time for we're gonna have an aunt jamama moment i am all in on the river for 775 dollars in this four bed pot and my opponent doesn't make a quick decision this time he goes into the tank and he tanks and he tanks and he tanks for about two minutes then he finally puts in the call i flip over my pocket kings the cowboys and my opponent mucks and actually gets up on the table and walks away it takes a little bit of a break i'm not complaining what a way to start out a nice beautiful session at the lodge let me know about the biggest pot you won recently with Pocket Kings in the comments below. And next hand, I wake up with Ace Queen of Clubs in the small blind. The $10 straddle is just on this time. Cut off opens to 
Button puts in the three bet and makes it $100 to go. And I'm in small blind and it's about time for that nice cold four bet all the way up to $250. We are playing relatively $2,000 or so deep here. So roughly 200 or so big blinds. I do really like my size in here. And my opponent on button thinks about it for a little bit and they do put in a call. So we're gonna go heads up to a flop of ace, seven, 10, rainbow, beautiful flop here. No clubs though to hit that backdoor flush. So we're just gonna have to hope that our top pair is good here in this four bet pot. And I put out a C bet for $160. My opponent thinks about it for a little bit and puts in the call. Turn comes the 10 of spades. This is possibly the worst turn that i can see um just a really rough spot here they're gonna have a lot of 10x in their range that they three bet and call here they could even have something like 10 9 suited jack 10 suited that they still call because we're just so deep here in this four bet pot wouldn't fault them for that so i do have to proceed with caution here with this 10 parent would have loved that the ace pair i mean if it did at that point i'm pretty much gonna have the best hand and i'm only gonna lose to like ace king right but yeah, unfortunately with that card pairing, I am going to be checking here. And once I do check a couple of seconds later, my opponent loads up a bet and they put out $240. And with that 33% size in it, definitely not gonna be going anywhere. If we hit an ace on the river, we will have the essential nuts here with aces full of tens. So can't go anywhere yet. I do put in a call and the river comes the nine of clubs kind of a brick card kind of not a brick card it is a brick card if you think about the fact that spades just missed there but the nine of clubs i mean they can have a hand like jack eight suited but that is just way too loose to be three better than call it in a four bet pot so i'm not really too worried about that and eight six suited is a possibility though i feel like they would have that a lot more dandy jack eight suited variety here so I do put in the check and I'm hoping at this point my opponent does just check back. But unfortunately, they have other plans. They put out a bet of $650 and I do go into the tank here. They're betting roughly just 50% of the pot. So it's not really a big size here. But in a four bet pot, I mean, with the stack to pot ratio, it feels like a really big size, doesn't it? Um... A lot of money is going there in the middle and i'm just thinking well what does my opponent have like i said i already broke down the hands i didn't think that maybe they would have like ace jack here i don't see that bet in river i do still lose to ace king they can have ace king so that's what i was worried about but the main thing i'm worried about is that 10 and i just go into the tank thinking 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 and i'm just like you know at this point i am really 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 at the top of my range here i mean just gonna have to call this a lot and just hope that they somehow are turning like a pair and a drawer into a bluff or something like that just really have no other you know option here so i do eventually put in the call and my opponent actually does show the six seven of hearts so they did flop the seven which of course they're gonna call on a flop and continue with but they did turn their one pair hand into a bluff. Literally the only thing I'm going to beat there. Kind of hard for them to have, let's say, queen jack for that busted straight draw when I do have a queen in my hand. So, yeah, really wasn't worried about them having that combination. But, yeah, we take down second pot of the night. Still want to improve on your game? Then make sure you watch this next video.